Hi, this is Dr. Nishal, and in this video we're going to be talking about multiple sclerosis and how to naturally slow down the progression of the disease. Now, the thing about MS is it's characterized by the um, degeneration of myelin, which is caused by the immune system attacking the myelin sheath. Now, uh, what happens is when the immune system attacks, it causes neural inflammation. So, the key to stopping or slowing down the progression of MS is to get a control, is to get control over neuroinflammation to reduce it as much as possible. Now, in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about very effective ways to do this naturally. Uh, stuff that's cost effective is not going to cost you very much money. It's not like going organic because uh, I know that most people cannot afford that. So I'm going to try to give you some reasonable tips. Uh, that will that will help you to reduce neuroinflammation, slow down the progression of the disease naturally, no side effects, things that will not interact with the medications that you are on at the moment in any way. So the first thing that we will be uh, uh, using and talking about is ginger. Now, a lot of people are thinking, oh, ginger, okay, yeah, that's used for um, nausea and, and uh, um vomiting and things like that. Well, yes, uh, however, ginger contains something known as 10-gingerol, which is a uh, phytoconstituent, a, a chemical that's present within ginger that is known to reduce and has been seen in research to reduce neuroinflammation significantly. Now, in addition to this, it also contains what's known as 6 shogol, which is another uh, chemical that is present in ginger that also has been seen uh, it, to, to reduce neuroinflammation significantly. So I would strongly recommend consuming more adequate amounts of ginger in your diet, uh, at least uh, during the course of a day. If you can get about um, half a teaspoon in to one teaspoon with your meals. Um, and uh, just adding that to your diet. I don't recommend you taking supplements that just makes it feel like, uh, like you're taking another medication, it's another pill. I'd, I'd recommend you taking it as um, uh, basic, basically as a food additive. Now, the second thing is cinnamon. Now, cinnamon, when I'm talking about cinnamon, I'm talking about Ceylon cinnamon, not um, cassia cinnamon, which is... Um, Ceylon cinnamon is basically true cinnamon, and cassia is kind of like the adulterant. It's, um, it's a substitute, not an adulterant. It's, it's more of a substitute. They basically have the same aroma, but it's not the same thing. Now, why cinnamon? Well, cinnamon contains cinnamaldehyde. Cinnamaldehyde uh, also reduces neuroinflammation. Now, there's tons of research on this. You can, you can Google it yourself. Uh, cinnamaldehyde neuroinflammation research. Just Google it. You'll, you'll find... Uh, uh, quite a bit of information on it. Uh, and that's another thing that reduces inflammation. So I would recommend now foods that contain contain these things. Uh, there's certain recipes that you can use uh, to include these things into your diet. So, so you're not like, you know, just trying to figure things out now. But before I get to that, let me, uh, let me discuss the next thing, uh, which is turmeric. Turmeric is also known as um, curcuma uh, longum. Now, it contains a uh, chemical constituent known as curcumin. There has been so much research on curcumin and its anti-inflammatory analgesic effects, uh, as well as its anti-cancer and so many, so many other effects that it has. And uh, it's quite beneficial. It's becoming quite popular in the national health uh, communities, even with uh, doctors as well and MDs. And um, now, the thing about... Uh, curcumin and, and turmeric is it's not uh, not always completely absorbed in the body in its own it has to be taken together with something to enhance its bioavailability uh, which would be black pepper uh, black pepper contains piperin which increases bioavailability up to three thousand percent that needs to be taken together with turmeric so if you're going to use turmeric in your diet also use black pepper and I don't recommend you taking piperin supplements. A lot of people in the health store, health food stores will tell you, oh, just take a piperin supplement. No. Black pepper also contains trace minerals, which are essential for absorption. Trace minerals like chromium and vanadium. So remember, always get things from whole sources, whole herb sources, whole food sources, not extracts, no taking pills and things. There's no need to add all of these things into your life when food itself can be used as medicine. So those are four things I mentioned. Ginger, cinnamon, turmeric, and uh, black pepper.
Now, there are certain foods that contain all of these things, certain recipes you can use. Specifically, East Indian uh, diets contain all of these um, spices in it, which is probably one of the reasons why in countries like India and Bangladesh, uh, and even Sri Lanka, the uh, occurrence of uh, neurodegenerative diseases like multiple sclerosis or even Parkinson's and Alzheimer's is not so common. Now, what's usually in uh, people's diets here? Now, in the U.S., people are quite stressed out. Life is much, uh, much more fast-moving, and uh, people don't always have the time to cook their meals, uh, so they rely on frozen dinners and fast food, which contains all kinds of additives which are extremely harmful uh, for your system, for your body, and especially for your brain. I know a lot of people nowadays are drinking all these diet sodas that contain aspartame. Aspartame is an uh, artificial sweetener, which is a neurotoxin. It promotes neuroinflammation. This, these are the kind of things you don't want to have um, in your diet, especially if you have uh, an autoimmune condition like MS. So you want to avoid all of these things. You want to cook your meals. Uh, you want to drink more water. You want to get fruit juices, not the packaged fruit juices again, um, because that contains lots of sugar. Now that comes to another topic, which I'm going to be discussing in another video, which is insulin resistance and its connection uh, to MS. Um, I'm also going to be discussing um, how to regenerate neurons uh, and how to regenerate brain tissue in general and what is a key nutrient lacking in the diets of people nowadays uh, responsible for uh, regrowing brain tissue, regrowing myelin, supporting the production um, of myelin and the production of brain tissue in, in, in general. Because as you know, uh, every part in our body goes through wear and tear. We've got to give it the raw materials to, to regrow itself. So I'm going to be discussing that in a, a few other videos.